Well, here we are again, folks. Uh, and yes, I've got another gin tea to look at. Uh, this is a Hornby one. Um, it was also sent to me by Peter along with the, the Bachman one. Uh, I did think of doing uh, either one single video for the two of them or maybe a two part gin tea special, but uh, I decided just to do two separate videos. Uh, Peter says that this is a, a total non runner, so let's see. Turn on the power. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Completely dead, and we've got a, a body fixing issue as well. So we'll get this into the shed and see what we can do with it. Uh, I think the 4F is going to have to come into shunting duty for this. Okay, so another Jinty, the Hornby one. Uh, I can see that this has got a Type 7 motor. It's got the traction tyres on the, the middle wheels there. Um, it's been well and truly weathered and we've got this problem. So no issue getting the body off. Simple as that. But we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, I think there would have been a clip at the back. But uh, that's long gone. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, right. Oh dear. Right, well, I can see straight away that the motor is done. Um, it's all a bit black and gunked up round about the commutator and there's wires poking out of the armature. So that looks well and truly deed. And that'll just come out. And this should pop out. I don't know how well you can see there but that's all black and uh, some of the winding has come out of the armature. So I'm going to go online and see if I can get a replacement motor for this. Uh, so we'll uh, come back to that um, but meantime we'll see if we can find a way to fix this body on. So it hooks on at the front and at the back, I'm pretty sure it would have had a clip coming up from there into that little hole. But uh, it's gone, so it's probably just been a case of, you know, somebody shoved a screwdriver in there too hard or just one too many times. Yeah, I think I'm going to try uh, making a little brass clip similar to the ones I've, I used to fix tender bodies on, and that might just allow a kind of a push fit. Okay, so I've taken this coupling off that was held on with this uh, little screw into this hole here. Um, this screw kind of just poked through the, the top of the hole. Um, so I'm going to replace it with this screw, which is a bit longer, so it'll come up a bit further. And then off camera, I have made a little brass clip. Um, drilled a little hole, bent it into shape, and the idea is that that'll be held in there with the coupling screw and act as a, a little clip on the end. So let's see if this will actually work. Screw it on really tight. And there we go. You can see I've bent that so it's coming out a bit and then coming in. So hopefully that will just hold the body on. Let's give it a go. So we need to make sure it's Hooked on at the front. There we go. And there we are. And to remove it again, you simply pull it off. Kind of just got to get to hooking both ends at once, getting those front hooks in place, and then it just presses down. It probably will loosen off. Um, you know, if this is pulled off and on a few times, that clip will start to bend in and this will loosen off. But you could just bend the clip out a wee bit to tighten it up. So, that's that problem solved. Just got to wait on the new motor. Okay then, so a couple of days later, uh, I've got a replacement motor. Uh, this is the full uh, motor assembly. Um, I probably could have picked up a, a little Type 7 motor on its own, but it's actually easier to get hold of these. Um, you can get these on eBay. This, this cost me £8 on eBay, so... Uh, I thought, might as well just get that. 
um, Peter had sent enough money, so this will make this quite an easy fix, hopefully. Oops, there we go. So yeah, it should be fairly straightforward. We'll put some uh, silicon grease on the worm gear. So, you have to hook this in at the back there, and then it should slot into place, making sure the pickups are behind the wheels. Like so. Make sure that's engaged. Does this work? No, it doesn't. Why is that not working? Maybe I should have tested the motor before I fitted it. Well, the motor works. I don't think there's a good connection between uh, that contact there and the one on the motor there. If we just bend this in a bit, that might do it. No, and I thought this was going to be simple. So from that wheel to there, from these wheels to there, unfortunately I can't get into that pickup. Still can't quite see if that contact on the motor is making contact with this pickup. Let's see if we can Test it by uh, touching the brush of the motor. What is going on? Yeah, I don't think that's making contact when that's in. Yeah, it's miles away. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So the reason this isn't working is this is falling short of making contact with that there. So power is getting to here, but it's not getting to there. So I need to find a way to correct that. So I'm just nice and freely, there shouldn't be a problem, i just got to bridge that connection. Ooh, I need to think about this. I've just opened up my J83, which I thought anyway had pretty much the same chassis and motor. Um, it doesn't have pickups on this side. The motor just, you know, the motor contact makes just presses against the uh, the chassis. But uh, the J eighty three doesn't have a recess here, like the Genty does. You know, there's a big rectangular recess in the chassis there. And I think that's why this has this pickup, and that contact in the motor is supposed to touch that. I think I don't know if something's broken off there. I'll need to have a look at the service sheet. Um, I think that's supposed to press down when you fit the motor and make contact with the with that there, but it's not doing so. Interesting. You can see the uh, the clip on the J eighty three that's missing on this. Ah, uh, yeah, it's all part of the underframe, so I'd need to uh, replace the entire underframe to to get that uh, back. But to be honest, in some respects, that's better. Right, okay, let's just pop this back on. I just need to go and check the service sheet first to see if there's something broken off the end of that, if there's something missing. Right, I'll have a look at the service sheet, and uh, nope, that's exactly as it should be, but uh, there is a little note on the service sheet that says ensure there's a good contact between uh, this bit here and what it calls the claw on the motor. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I've cut a little piece of uh, copper strip here, and I'm just going to fold it over 
and that's going to go underneath the end of the pickup there and sit in that little recess, I hope. There we go, that's it in. So now this little contact on the motor, hopefully, will touch that little piece of copper I've put in, which is in turn touching the pickup. There we go. Right, get that down. Might as well screw in a capacitor this time, I think. Okay. It works. Right, we'll get some test track, I think, and try it. Well, it's working, but uh, I think we'll take the underframe off, get it back to us a clean out, re lubricate them, uh, just check the wheel spacing on this. Thirteen point eight, thirteen point eight, fourteen. A bit in the narrow side, but it'll be fine. Right, all. Have a look at the what state the axles are in. I have to undo my clip at the back. I'm tempted to order up a replacement underframe actually, but eh, it'll be fine. Keep as much of the original locomotive as possible. Right, what's going on here? This should have little springs which are all gunked up. Tied together a fluff. So I'll we'll give that a scoosh. Oh dear, that's dirty. That has left the wheels out altogether. I'll give this a all good clean out. Look at that. Manky. So we'll get the manky brush on it. These two springs, a wee scoosh as well. Some of the crap off them. And we'll pop them back in. Create these axles. Refit the wheels, making sure we've got them the right way around. Put fresh oil. Get this back on. Need to refit the clip at the back. Right, I think I'm going to change this clip at the back. I've made it too long, really. I didn't think it would matter too much, but trying to engage the hooks in the front and get that in at the same time is a little bit fiddly. I think if it was a lot shorter, it would still work and be easier to fit the body. So I think what we'll do is we'll just cut it about there. Right, so if we bend it out the way, about there, and then in the way at the top, try that. Now 
There we are. That still works. Just a little bit easier to remove and put back on. That. Okay, I think we're done. Let's just put this on the test track again. Right, I think we'll pull it out of the shed at that and see how it goes around the layout. Right, so let's bring her out. So there we are, that's this Hornby 3F running again. Uh, I wasn't quite expecting the problem between the replacement motor and the pickup, you know, there's no connection between the two. Um, bit of a daft design that, to be honest, but uh, a wee bit of copper strip and sorted that problem. Um, after that, all it really needed was, you know, a bit of a clean up and off she went. Uh, yeah, on the, on the test track, this actually sounded quite rattly and it's funny how sometimes that can happen, you know, you know run the, the locomotive on the test track on the towel and it can sound quite noisy and you put it on the layout and it sounds fine and sometimes it's the reverse, it's um, very quiet on the test track and quite noisy on the layout so you know I've kind of come to know that uh, the test track, you know, running a, running a locomotive on the test track gives no indication of whether it's running quietly or not. Um, I've had a look online for a replacement underframe for this but uh, everywhere's out of stock as far as I can see. So this will just have to make do with its little uh, brass clip, but that's fine, it does the job. Uh, it's interesting to work on uh, a Bachmann and Hornby version of the same locomotive back-to-back -back like that. Um, of these two, uh, personally I prefer the Hornby one. Um, I know that the Bachmann one is a better looking model, it's got a little bit more detail, 
but I really don't like the motor configuration and the gears. It's always going to be a little, you know, generate a little bit of noise. Whereas the Type 7 motor in the, the Hornby one, you know, it, it's, you know, there's fewer gears, it's just a bit more robust. Um, so I think between the two, my preference would be the Hornby one. I know not everyone would agree with that, that's absolutely fine. But uh, to be honest, I'd be happy with either one. And in some respects, I'd quite like to get the backing one to see if I could quieten it down. Because if I had my own one, I could mess around with it and see if I could uh, shut it up completely. But uh, I'd, I'd be quite happy with either of those. But if I was to really, really pick which one I think is the better uh, runner, it's certainly the Hornby one, which is the better model, possibly the backing one. So it's kind of... Six and a half, a dozen, really. So I'm very keen to get a Jinty, so it's quite interesting to read the comments in the last video. Um, I'll see what I can get on eBay. As I say, I'd, I'd be happy with either of those. Um, but I'll see what, what I can get on eBay. But I think I'll be able to get the Hornby one a lot cheaper than the Bachman one. And, uh, you know, I'd kind of like to get one for under 30 quid. Okay, folks, I'll get uh, both of these Jinty's packed up, sent back to Peter, and I'll be back with another local that I've never had before very soon. Okay, catch us later, folks.